All right, good morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time you've given us uh, to be able to dive deeper into purpose. And I pray, Lord, that as a representative, as an ambassador of you, I pray, Lord, I do you a great work for your glory. Lord, as we talk about this chapter that we're in and how we transition, I pray uh, that the words that I speak will give life and clarity to everyone listening, that they'll be able to internalize it and immobilize it and and that it be satisfactory to their souls, enabling them to do a great work for you. With that being said, God, we come against every type of demonic spirit, anything that may be warned against myself, these young people, any type of retaliation that may be coming against my family, I cancel it now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for that authority, and I thank you for this opportunity. Jesus, let me to pray. Amen. My topic for today, if you want to write it in, in your books, is how will you close this chapter of your life? How will you close this chapter of your life? The verse that I will be in today will be Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, 1, verses 2. The word of God says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We'll take some time to break that down a little bit later, but let's get right into the problem. Many young people, unfortunately, would not close this chapter well because of these four things. Many young people or people, period, would not be able to close this chapter well because, number one, they're not close to God. They will not be able to close this chapter due to their distance from God. My question to you, how close are you to him? We can't be no closer than God with his spirit inside of us. So closeness doesn't mean proximity. It means perspective. My wife and I can be in the same room and be miles apart. Closeness doesn't mean proximity. It means perspective. The Bible says it in him that we live, move, and have our being. God is everywhere. And for some of us, God is on the inside of us. But that doesn't mean we're close. So the reason why many people will not be able to close this chapter well is because they're close to God mentally but not close enough in life. Number two, many young people, unfortunately, will not close this chapter well. School chapter, year chapter, is because they don't know what's enclosed in his word or enclosed in his book for you or them. The reason, unfortunately, many young people will not close this chapter well is because they don't know what's enclosed in the word of God, what's in it. If you don't know what's in it, how can you win it? How can you survive? How can you be successful? So a lot of us, as we're approaching the end of the school year or approaching a new chapter of life, may not be able to close it well because we don't even know what the word of God says about us. Now, the third reason why many young people, unfortunately, will not close this chapter well is because they're looking for closure in all the wrong places. A lot of you are emotionally everywhere. And it's affecting your school. It's affecting everything you do because you haven't closed chapters that should have been closed already. Closed out people who shouldn't even be close to you. How many of you right now are still being affected emotionally, mentally because of people that you allowed to get too close but wasn't able to have the character to play a character part in your life? So you have to understand that closure can only be found in God. So many people are still waiting for an ex-boyfriend to give them a reason why he left them. Still waiting for the girl to tell them a reason. You don't need no reason for treason. God is your closure. So a lot of people are unable are probably going to be unable to close this chapter because they're looking for closure in all the wrong places. And last but not least, many young people, unfortunately, will not close this chapter well because they are practicing undisclosed sins. Undisclosed. The Bible says if we confess our sins one to another, we will be healed. 
Those who practice sin will never be able to win. Practice sin means I know it's wrong and I'm practicing it without remorse. I'm practicing like God ain't going to do nothing about it. I dare God to do something about it. That's practicing sin. There's a difference between practicing sin and trying to overcome sin. Some people still sin. They're still going to make a mistake tomorrow, but their heart don't really want to do it. But if your heart loves to sin more than you love the Savior, then you haven't really been saved. So four reasons why many young people, unfortunately, will not be able to close this chapter was because, number one, they're not close to God. Number two, they don't know what's enclosed in his book for them. Number three, they're looking for closure in all the wrong places. And last but not least, they are practicing undisclosed sins. Yeah. Number one, they are not close to God. Number two, they don't know what's enclosed, (laughs) E-N-closed, in God's book for them. Number three, they're looking for closure in all the wrong places. Gotcha, gotcha. Number one, (laughs) they're not close to God. My bad, big dog. Number two, they don't know what's enclosed in God's word. Number three, they're looking for closure in all the wrong places. And number four, they are practicing undisclosed sins. He got it. All right. Next point. Break. The, here's the breakdown of your life in book terms. The breakdown of your life in book terms. The point of this message is to inspire you, enable you, encourage you to finish this school chapter well. So here is the breakdown of your life in book terms. Your life is a book. Your life is a book. Number two, the theme of your book is your calling. Your life is a book. Every book has a theme. The theme of your book is your calling. Number three, this chapter, this year is a chapter. My bad. This year is a chapter. This month is a paragraph. This week is a sentence. And today is a word. Gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Your life is a book. The theme of that book is your calling. This year is a chapter. This month is a paragraph. This week is a sentence. And today is a word. And my question to you today is what's the word for today? Your life is a book. The theme of that book is your calling. This chapter, this year is a chapter. This month is a paragraph. This week is a sentence. And today is a word. What's the word for today? The goal in life is to endeavor to be on the same page as God. There are two types of books when it comes to your life. The book God has already written for you and the book your life is writing. How much do you endeavor for both of those books to match? There are two types of books when it comes to your life. The book God has already written for you and the book your life is writing. How much do you endeavor for them to to match. The goal is not to write out the chapters of your life, but to read or discern them. God has already written your story. All you have to do is learn how to read and comprehend what he has written. Life is not about me trying to write my own life. My life is to endeavor to write what is how to match what has already been written. The uh, but Bible people back in the day, they would transcribe, meaning that they would have the original word of God on one side, and then they will word by word match this copy with this copy. Right now, the Bible that you have 
can be easily connected to the Bible, to the original documents. Because the Hebrew people, the Jews were some of the most detailed individuals. They literally transcribed every word accurately. And when they got to God's name, they were worship. They wouldn't even want to write his name right away. They said, when I got the Yahweh, they'll start, they'll, they'll change the pen. They'll change the ink when they wrote his name. So what they were saying was this document right here, I'm going to transcribe it accurately. So my goal in my life is to read his story for me and transcribe it accurately over here. That my goal is to say, because today is like a word. God, what's the word for today? And the word for today, when it couples with the word of tomorrow and the word for two days, will develop a sentence. And the sentence of every week will develop a paragraph. And the paragraph every month will develop a chapter. And every chapter will reveal the essence of your story. That's why you got to find what's God's word for you today. Because when you find out today's word, you will begin to see what he has been writing for your life. Even though our chapters don't always match perfectly, God can and will turn your story around for your good if you allow him to be the author of it. Who's the author of your story now? Because whoever the author is, is your authority figure. Who has the pen? Who's typing? Who are you giving control? A lot of you all are have given your mom the pen, your dad the pen. You're giving your friends the pen and you wonder why your story doesn't match his. You can't get so caught up on giving authority to authors who are not omniscient, who don't know you. Nobody in this room knows you greater than God. That's why we got to make sure God has the pen. Y'all all right? No matter how this chapter looks today, the story can always get better. No matter how this chapter looks, the story can always get better. I have four chapters of my life that were some of the challenging chapters I ever lived. Right now, I'm on chapter 36 of my life. One of the first years that was one of the challenging, most challenging chapters of my life was the chapter 11. Chapter 11 was the year of 96. <laughs> my first basketball goal, my first bike, the best Christmas and the worst Christmas I ever had. My uncle was in the backyard helping me put my basketball to goal together. 10 speed bike, best Christmas ever. Before January 1st hit, my mom came into the room and said, son, we got to take all your gifts back because we got bills to pay. Chapter 11 was one of the worst years. Chapter 15 was when I was the most insecure I ever was. If you look at my school pictures right now, I always crinkle my forehead because I got picked on by having a big head. I didn't like the way I looked. Chapter 15, I was insecure. Chapter 23 was when I almost committed suicide. Toughest year of my life. I was on 485 coming home. And at that moment, I said, God, what's the purpose of even living? I said, I'm going to speed this car 90 miles and I'm going to flip it because what's the point of my life? Chapter 23. Chapter 33 was one of the scariest years of my life. The life, the, the year I was about to marry my wife. But the whole year, the devil kept telling me, I'm going to kill you at 33. You're going to die at 33. Just like I killed Jesus, I'm going to kill you at 33. January 1st, 2000, whatever year, I cried like a baby because I defeated 33. Chapter 36 right now, one of the best years of my life. What I'm trying to say is we all have bad chapters. Right now, you may be in the middle of a bad chapter. But in God's hands, your story gets better. Don't give up, because what if I would have ended my life at chapter 23? All you would have heard was there was a guy who went to school here, but that's all you knew. Ten years, uh, 13 years between 23 and 36. How many people have I impacted? If I wasn't here today, how many souls would not have been impacted for God's glory? Because I wanted to end my life at chapter 23. Who cares what's going on in this chapter of your life when God is the author? 
Every challenging year made me who I am this year. If you always want comfort, if you always want coddling, you will never be successful. And some of you all, I know your stories. I know a lot of your stories in this chapter this year has been tough for you, a lot of you all. But God said, let me keep writing the story because every good story has tension. Every good story has pain in it. Nobody wants to see a perfectly clean, no challenging, no challenges in the story. Nobody wants that. Because it only took one perfect person to reach imperfection. Even his life was challenging. The Bible says we haven't even challenged. We haven't even been challenged all the way to blood. Meaning Jesus said, I died a death for you all. And he says, you worrying about the little trials you're going through now. Next point. Even though our chapters don't always match perfectly. I already said that. Next point. Don't feel bad about how you started this chapter. Just focus on finishing this chapter strong. I don't care if you had D's, F's. I don't care if you're in the middle of being uh, uh, having F's right now. Don't focus on the feelings of this chapter. Focus on finishing it strong. Next point. Finishing this chapter strong builds strength for the start of the next chapter. Next point. God redeems a time. Oh, y'all, y'all, my bad. Repeat it. Don't feel bad about how you started this chapter. Just focus on finishing this chapter strong. Finishing this chapter strong builds strength for the start of the next chapter. It's important to finish strong no matter how you started. Because we have what, four weeks left? Fin- three weeks left? Finishing this week, finishing this year strong sets you up to start the next chapter well. Life is about momentum. The ninth and 10th graders, we talked about this. Life is about momentum. Anybody in a room who's worked out knows that after four, five, six weeks of working out, you take one week off, it feels like you got to start all the way over. Momentum is key for success. The goal is I have to keep moving in the direction direction of what I want to have in life so I can build momentum. Because momentum would then do the work for you. So who cares what kind of grades you had early on this year? Who cares about how tough this year was? Focus on finishing strong. Next point, God redeems a time when your mind is renewed. God redeems time. So it doesn't matter how much time you have lost. God said, if you just change the way you think about yourself, change the way you think about success, change the way you think, I can redeem the time. So don't get so caught up on, but, but Josh, I, oh, Mr. Ezzy, whatever you call me, I've wasted so much time. God said, I can redeem it if you allow your mind to be renewed. Mental renewal means God changed the way I see this. The reason why many of you all may be in threat of not finishing this chapter well because when you look in the mirror, you don't like you. You literally have to change the way you see yourself. You got to see yourself as beautiful. You got to see yourself as handsome. You got to see yourself as successful. You have to see yourself well in order to be well. But so many people's minds are so toxic, minds are so filled with other people's opinions, so filled with all type of negative things, they can't see no positives. If you, all you have is negative thinking, how can you have positive success? It's impossible. That's why the devil's after your mind, because if I have your mind, I have your time. Let's keep going. Finishing this chapter strong is not about what you get out of the chapter, but the person you become in the chapter. Everybody watches a movie for character development, right? You want to see how did, what's, I don't even know the Spider-Man guy's name. What's his name? Tommy, Tommy who? Kenneth Copeland? I'm just, I'm just joking. Tommy who? In the movie, what's his name? Peter Parker, there we go. I, I don't watch, I know, I know, I know. I, I'm, not, I'm not a movie guy. I'm just not a movie guy. My, my wife loves movies. I don't, we watch movies. But either way, you watch movies for what? Character development to a degree. You see him at, sometimes they go all the way back to when they was 12 years old. They give you some history. Then they give you some tension. And then you see that person succeed. 
Life is not about what you can get from the chapter, like success and straight A's or whatever. It's about the person you become because of the chapter. There's a lot of people who's got great, great grades, but a horrible person. There's a lot of people who are Christian characters, but they only doing it for trophies. There's a lot of people who doing a bunch of stuff, but their heart's not in it. So you got to be able to say, hey, God, develop my character in this chapter. God will never bring you around a thing, under a thing, over a thing. He brings you through a thing because of the person you become because of it. So don't get mad because you're in a single parent home. Don't be mad because your dad ain't there. Your mom ain't there. Don't be mad. It's developing character in you. The people, that's why I tell people when I was at Briarwood and I dealt with kids that were in poverty. I dealt with kids that were in Title I schools, crazy stuff. I said, man, don't envy these kids in private school. Because if you get hit in the mouth by life at nine, you'll be ready for the punches at 29. But the people who are coddled, protected, sheltered, when life just barely slaps them, they KO. So I'm so glad I went through hell because now I can experience heaven. That's what you got to understand about life. Life sucks. Life is going to try you. Life is going to hit you in the face to see if you will hit it back. But that's why you got to endure it. If this chapter is tough, embrace it because it's developing character in you. All right, we're good on time. Now, how to close this chapter well? Five points on how to close this chapter well, but let's break down the text first. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, we also... Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, in order to be successful, find a witness. The previous chapter 11 of Hebrews was talking about the champions of faith. These people who were successful in faith. But none of those people were perfect. If you look at the lineage, that's why when you read the Gospels, don't just pass by the genealogies of Jesus. Uh, Adam begot this, begot that person. Don't, don't, eat, don't just gloss over that because it's boring. There's a lot of meat in ge- genealogy because there's a prostitute in Jesus' genealogy. David, who killed the man, took that man's wife, is in Jesus' genealogy. What Jesus is saying, I came through imperfection still. So what you have to understand, he says, man, don't just look at people that you admire and be like, hey, they look strong. Ask them where they got their strength. Ask them what made them strong. And anybody who got any kind of strength, all that comes out of their mouth is gratitude. Because they understand the only way they get their strength is in God. So this text says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses. You got to surround yourself with witnesses. People who's actually seen. Your peers don't know nothing. I said this many times before. Don't surround yourself with peers. Surround yourself with people who got years. Years under their belt. Who know what they talking about. All your peers can give you is opinions. People who actually live can actually teach you about life. So you got to look at your peers and be like, how many years you got ahead of me? You don't got that many years. It don't mean that you let them go. There's three type of people you got to have in your life that you're going to end up having in your life. This is sidebar, something else. You're going to have champions in your life. These are people who are actually got rings on their hands. Nobody goes to, unfortunately, don't go to Charles Barkley to learn how to be a champion. They go to Jordan. They go to people who got the rings, Right? Charles Burke has a lot of great commentary, but Shaq always stifles him by saying, but I have rings, though. Right. So you're going to have people surround yourself with people who are champions, people who got rings on their hands. Number two, surround yourself with comrades. Comrades are your peers, people who are, uh, who are ex- who's trying to pursue greatness with you, your comrades. And last one, as you get older, you're going to be surrounded by carriers, people that's going to carry your gems. That's sidebars. That's something for down the road. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, people who witness faith, people who witness God, people who got years under their belt, will inspire you to lay aside every weight and sin. Now, if you're around a sinner, are you going to stop sinning? 
No, you want to be around people who say, man, I'm winning, not sinning. Surround yourself with people who say, you know, we don't do that here. Surround yourself with women who say, no, we, we dress like this. We modest around here. Surround yourself with men that says we don't focus on tails. We focus on prevailing. We, we, don't, we, we focus on something different. So when you surround yourself with the right witnesses, you'll do things different. So look at your friends. Look who you surround yourself with. You'll see what you've been laying aside. Anybody knows. I remember when I was 15, 16 years old, I was in the weight room with Courtney Brown. Y'all know who Courtney Brown is. Played for San Francisco 49ers after he graduated. When I was in the weight room, Victory Alumni, Victory Alumni played for San Francisco 49ers, played for Clemson, right? Yep. When that man lifted weights with his shirt off, I said, whoa, that's different. <laughs> when that guy was out there running track, I said, that's different. That inspired me because I'm like, no, if I want that, I got to do what he did. If you want what something, if you want what someone has, you got to do what they did. So what I'm saying is, is that if you see someone that's fitter than you spiritually, whatever, you want to be like, how did you get what you got? That would then inspire you to lay aside every weight and sin. I don't even want to do that no more because I want a marriage like that. I want a family like that. I want that things like that. Am I going to surround myself with bums if I want to be a millionaire? I'm going to want to surround myself with millionaires or people at least trying to get there. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin. See, there's two things there, weight and sin. What's the difference? Someone help me, because I did it in Bible class, but maybe it was a different class. But what's the difference between weight and sin? Weight and sin. Sin is wrong. Weight is not necessarily wrong, but end up leading you to wrong. A friend may not be technically sin for you, they're just a weight to you. Some of you are carrying people that you shouldn't be carrying. I tell people all the time, when you get on a scale, that's not how much you weigh. Because the scale can't weigh your soul. The weight, the uh, scale can't weigh your mind. So when you step on a scale, oh man, I lost five pounds. No, but your, your brain is 240 pounds, full of thoughts. Your soul is heavy with people's opinions. So you got to get to a place to say, you know what? Hey, man, what? Who am I carrying? What am I carrying that's keeping me from carrying things? Well, for time's sake, let's keep going. I got to be done in uh, four minutes. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy? What's your joy? Can't be a boy. Can't be a toy. In order to go through the devil's uh, deployments of uh, uh, snares against you, it can't happen. Jesus has to be your joy. The only way I got through my life in the latter part was realizing who Christ is to me. I realized, hey, man, you're my joy, fam. The greatest thing that I want to hear in my life is well done. You know that because if you're motivated by well done, you won't get anything partially done. The rest of the verse is it self explains itself. Now, how to close this chapter well, C L O S E. How to close this chapter well. Number one, C, you got to get close to God and let Him be your closure. In order to close this chapter well, the school year chapter well, chapter 16, 17, 18, 15, 14 well, you got to get close to Him. I know people who barely knows any scripture closer to God than people who can memorize and interpret 15 billion of them. You got to say, God, I just want to be close to you. And you got to let him be your closure, man. He ain't going to tell you why he left. He got a new girl now. She ain't going to tell you why she left. She done moved on. If you wait for someone to tell you why they left, you will never go right. You got to say, God, I need you to be my closure. Close this for me. Why do you think God was the one that closed the ark? Because Noah would have been too nice. Noah would have been like, I hear their cries. Open the door. Let them in. God closed the door so that nobody can open it. 
So the reason why God closed him out of your life, stop standing at a door with a, with a crowbar trying to open a door that you don't have enough strength to open. When God closed it, that's it. And God don't have to explain to you why he closed doors because your mind is not mature enough to even comprehend why he closed it. Because you love the thing behind the closed door more than the one that closed it. But when you get older, you'd be like, man, I love you more than anything. You will look back over your life and be like, I see why you closed him, her, them out my life. How to close this chapter? Well, you got to get close to God and let him be your closure. Number two, you got to learn how to read. You got to learn how to read. Do you know how to read and comprehend what God is doing in your life? That's discernment. Discernment means I accurately can comprehend what God is doing. A lot of you all, God has, wrote, has written an amazing script for today, but because it's not what you want to read, you won't read it. We're not even just talking about reading the word of God. We're talking about reading what he's doing. Can you truly read what God is doing right now? When I was 14, 15, when I was upset while my dad went in my life, I read the story wrong. But when I got older and read that chapter again, if my dad was in my life, would I even be a preacher today? So when you're in the midst of the story, it's hard to read. But when you learn how to read how God is, what God is doing in your life, you will say, God, I see what you're doing. The other L, you got to learn or determine what legacy you want to leave. If you want to close this chapter, you got to be legacy minded. You got to say, hey, man, like right now, man, I'm thinking about my kids, kids, kids. I'm thinking about everything. I'm thinking about generational success. I'm thinking about my legacy. When I die, I want people to say that man lived. That man lived a full life. I want people, I, the, the package service I want to have is my funeral of people saying, man, I'm so glad you lived. That's how you want to live. You want to live where, to the point where even when you die, you're still living. When I die, Mr. Ezra is going to live in some of y'all's hearts for a long time. Y'all going to be teaching your kids Eziums. Well, this is some guy back when I was my 10th grade Bible teacher, and he said this. I want to live forever. That's how I live forever, by living a life for God. Oh, you got to organize your life. If you want to close this school chapter well, life well, you got to get your life organized. Self-explanatory. And you got to get over how this year started. The best thing to have mentally is amnesia. I got to forget. I, God loves me so much. I don't care if I do a sin right now. God loves so much, I delete it. It's gone. I don't even, I don't even process that because that's how much he loves me. That doesn't mean I do it again and try to do it again. That means that I'm not going to allow what I did yesterday to make me miss God's love for me today. His grace and mercies, which I knew what? Every. every why they knew every morning? Because what? Because I need it. <laughs> and he loves me. S, you got to solidify a why and change the way you see yourself. You got to solidify a why. Why must I finish this chapter well? Why? Let me get that D to a C. Let me get that C to a B. Let me get that F to a, a, a D. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just get it up a couple of numbers and then celebrate that. But you got to solidify a why. Why must I? Finish this chapter. It's more than just academics. It's about how can I finish? What kind of person will I become if I finish this year strong? Yes. S, I'll start over C. You got to get close to God and let him be your closure. L, you got to learn how to read and determine what legacy you want to leave. O, you have to organize your life and get over how you started. S, you got to solidify a why and change the way you see yourself. Man, I... Man, I feel bad for you all, man, because Instagram opened the you comparing yourself to people in Asia. You comparing yourself to someone in California. You see what I'm saying? Like you C Coach Mel could tell you, Miss Smart, Miss Farr could probably tell you, we only could compare ourselves to people we went to school with. And then when we got to college, we realized they weren't even really that cool. <laughs> But y'all are comparing your low life to other people's high life, so you wonder why your film ain't good. You got to get to a place where you say, I don't care what anybody else is doing. I'm going to focus on what God is doing in my life. You got to change. You got to see. You got to look in the mirror. Even if you don't believe it, you got to receive it. What God says about you. Listen, man. I, listen, I told you this, man. I don't care about how I look for any other woman. 
I do not care. I said this before. I only have to be handsome to one woman. That's it. Y'all putting pressure to be attracted to everyone when those people don't even care. The people can't determine beauty. The only one that can really determine beauty is the one who beautifies everything, and that's God. When you look in the mirror, you got to say, man, you look good, bro. You handsome. You, you beautiful. Even if you don't think it, you got to say it. Last but not least, and I'm out your way. E, you got to execute a plan and eliminate everything that doesn't deserve to be in the next chapter of your life. You got to have a plan. Execute it. Last but not least, you got to eliminate everything. What do you need to eliminate out your life? How to close this chapter well. See, you got to get close to God and let him be your closure. You got to learn how to read or discern and determine the legacy you want to leave. Oh, you got to organize your life and get over how you started. S, you got to solidify a why and change the way you see yourself. And last but not least, you have to execute a plan and eliminate everything that doesn't deserve to be in the next chapter of your life. How will you close this chapter of your life? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for these young people. I pray, Lord, that these young people are inspired to finish this school chapter, which is just a segment within the chapter of this year of their life, that they'll finish it strong and be motivated to build the momentum to finish this whole year, chapter 16, 15, 17, some 18, 19, whatever year they're on, that they will always focus on finishing every chapter. Lord, give them a word today that will make a great sentence this week, a great paragraph this month, a great chapter this year and a great book of life. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you, you know, this message wasn't meant to trigger any type of salvation stuff, but, you know, if you need to talk to me.